Hi ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for joining us. I want to promise this to be another insightful sort of tutorial on uh, the wonderful world of hydroform. And uh, today what we're discussing is block production and sort of um, what are the things to look out for in order to ensure that um, you meet your production targets. We'll focus on a particular sort of uh, production target, say 1,500 blocks a day. What is the production team that is required um, in order to achieve 1,500 blocks a day? And basically what you need in order to achieve those kinds of numbers is 9 to 11 laborers um, plus a foreman. From your laborers, you would select a team leader who would then report to the foreman. Now, the foreman has a list of set duties that he must ensure that um, you know, he undertakes diligently in order to ensure that these targets are achieved. Right? And um, one of them is uh, issues related to the preparation of material prior to the actual date of the production. Um, what's always uh, a problem on many block production sites is the issue of sieved material. Um, because of the lack thereof, production schedules are usually affected. So we always recommend that a um, uh, good uh, sort of block production site is one where they sieved material two days prior to the actual date of uh, the, the planned production. So the foreman would have to make sure that there's always sieved material on the site um, enough to carry them uh, through the next day. Um, he'd also have to make sure that the cement stores are you know, stocked up. So it's always good to determine how much cement is required to produce 1,500 blocks. As an example, what we use as a rule of thumb is that um, a 50 kg bag of cement can produce about 40 blocks. And for, with that information, you can then be able to determine how many bags of cement you require. He would have to make sure that the cement and the soil is always readily available. Another important thing is that the water must always be readily available and also the quality of the water must be checked to make sure that it's, pot it's potable water that can be used and is free of any sort of um, dirt or anything like that. What is most important is that the machine itself must be regularly checked and serviced if required. There are sort of uh, there are parts within the machine that are wear and tear parts and you must make sure that those parts are checked um, every day possibly um, in order to ensure that your machine is in top condition and therefore producing top quality blocks. So the, the, the state of your machine directly impacts the quality. It's always good to plan ahead with any block production site. If you set out to do 1,500 blocks a day and for whatever reason you don't meet that target, um, tomorrow's plan needs to be different. You need to take into consideration the time you've lost in that. So planning is a very important. People think that you could run a block production site with little to no planning, but we've seen that um, you know it, it compounds, and over time you end up you know falling way behind your schedule. If say for example you had to produce five hundred thousand blocks or something over a period of time, uh, it's important that you plan. We always stress the issue of safety and um, there are sort of safety precautions and measures that need to be observed particularly when op for, for the guys who are working around the machine um, you know to always make sure that um, you know, they're aware of where they are and what they're doing and sort of the risks involved all of those would be duties that sort of fall under the foreman he would have to make sure that sort of the machine is checked material is there and those kinds of things you know and uh, it's not something that you would entrust to a laborer or, some, or someone like that. It has to be a supervisor, someone with the technical know-how of the operation of, of, of the, the entire block yard. There are other things that foreman would have to look out for. Things such as the block length. The dimensions of the block are very important because they sort of uh, give you an insight into the condition of the wear plates and stuff like that. Um, so you must regularly check the length of your blocks and uh, we do recommend that uh, regularly sampling your blocks and actually measuring them. We're not saying that you should measure all 1,500 blocks to see if the length is right, but uh, you know, if you do it at the beginning of a production cycle and at the end, it should give you, you know, sort of an idea of the length of all the blocks in that, in that production cycle. Um, also, another way of sort of maintaining a record of uh, the condition of your machine and where you are in terms of meeting your targets is to keep logbooks. So we keep production logbooks 
Um, and uh, if you have a look at our manuals, we have several examples of sort of what a production logbook is meant to look like. But um, you know, some of the key things that uh, you'd want to record in a production logbook is the amount of hours that uh, your blocks have spent curing, which we'll go into more detail about curing and the process later on. And um, also when the actual date when blocks were, 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 were produced. So that would sort of be the purpose in general of um, a production logbook and the quantities of blocks produced to see if you're actually meeting your targets. Um, we also recommend keeping a maintenance book and uh, this is particularly for your machine uh, sort of anything and anything else on the block yard that may require maintenance to keep a record of when checks are done, when things are replaced and when we sort of expect things to, to be changed and replaced in, in the future. Um, this is important because some of the parts that you need to put on the machine might have lead time. If your supplier says they need two weeks to deliver the part, you need to take that into consideration. It might affect your production targets. Uh, what is the procedure for achieving 1,500 blocks in a day, meaning from the time you would arrive at site, the beginning of the, of, of, of the shift, until the time you guys step off site and you're celebrating you know, successfully having uh, you know, achieved your target? Um, the first thing, and we've discussed this already under the, 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 the responsibilities and duties of a foreman, is that you must ensure that you have a sufficient amount of soil present on site prior to the actual commencement of the production. Production should not start until you have the amount of soil required. What we've seen is guys sometimes will sort of have half the soil required to produce 1,500 blocks with the hope that while others are working then the rest will be sitting. A lot can go wrong with that and you might not meet your target and end up losing money. The water issue as well has been mentioned as well. Always make sure that you have a sufficient amount of water. Now water is important for two reasons because it's used in the mixing process um, so you cannot make the blocks without the water but also it's used during the curing process and for me this is the most important thing because you know you could have um, 10 bags of cement in any given mix but for as long as you're not curing your blocks properly you'll never achieve the required strength so always make sure that you have enough water to mix and also enough water to um to to, to do your curing mm -hmm. as well ensuring that the cement is properly stepped and close enough to the machine. You don't want your cement too far out and then you have your guys walking long distances to get the cement. Cement is quite heavy, mind you, 50 kilograms. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally if there's a shortage of, 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 of um, wheelbarrows, anything, guys are actually putting the stuff in their back. So you don't want to wear your guys out by putting the materials too far away from, from your machine. You want to be sure that the people that you have on site are strong, are healthy, and uh, you know, don't give in easily to fatigue and, and wear and, 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 and kinds of things right uh, speaking of that being hard work it is for that reason that uh, we also say that mixing by hand should be you know uh, a no-no uh, because um, firstly uh, it is hard and laborious work but also because of the issue of consistency of mixes because when you start mixing by hand if you don't mix that mix the same as you did the prior mix or the mix that's going to come out after that, you're going to start having inconsistencies in your blocks themselves. And um, what we've seen is that a lot of time is wasted trying to fix mixes and rectify mixes and things. So it's always best if it's done mechanically by a machine, or preferably the pan mixes that come with the machines. We've already mentioned um, the fact that in order to run a hydrofoil machine, you need about 9 to 11 guys. Now, of the 9 to 11 guys, only about 8 of them would actually be at uh, around the machine. You'd have an additional 2 guys whose job it is to just take the block that comes out of the machine from the machine to the drying area. Right? So, they're not really involved with the production per se, save for the moving of the finished product to the place where it's meant to dry. Normally, those guys would also be the same guys that are in charge of the curing. Uh, because what we do with curing is that um, once a block has come out of the machine, it's been checked for length and everything, and we're happy with it, and it's taken to the drying area. Uh, immediately, what we then do is that we cover it with uh, a, a, a DPM membrane in order to retain all the moisture and ensure that proper curing takes place. 
um, and thereafter we'll probably water it at the end of the day before leaving and then subsequently for the next seven days in the morning and in the afternoon we'll open up the DPM or, or, or the plastic sheeting that we've covered the blocks with, water the blocks and then cover it again in order to retain all that moisture and ensure that hydration takes place. Um, what we also suggest is that if you want to meet your targets, um, you want to pay your guys based on uh, a proper quality block produced. Because if you have a normal day rate, um, you know, guys will never meet their targets. But if you're paying guys for a proper quality block produced, not only do you meet your targets, but you also ensure that these guys take quality service. Because if a block is to a quality that is not acceptable, then they will not be paid for that. So always ensure that you're paying guys per quality block produced. We have certain formulae in place to assist you and technical data to assist you in determining how much cement is required in order to produce, say, X amount of strength. Uh, 8 MPA or 14 MPA. But we always say, as a disclaimer, that uh, none of that will help you if your curing is not proper. You will never be able to attain that strength if you do not cure properly. And just to recap, curing happens for seven days and this is a minimum before you can even start building with, um, with those blocks. You know, you have enough now to sort of assist you in successfully running um, a, block, a, a, a blockyard uh, production site and um, sort of that can then be scaled to, to, to producing 2,200 blocks a day with another machine or you know as far as 3,000 blocks with one of our high-end machines as well. The principles are the same. The key personnel is the foreman and um, it, is, it, is, it is to your advantage to use logbooks for maintenance and also for production cycles in order to keep record of sort of the happenings in any given day. Thank you for joining us and um, we look forward to your comments and queries. Cheers.